In 1328, Charles IV died without an heir, and Edward III of England had claimed the throne because his mother was Charles's sister. Philip V got the throne instead because the Valois house had claimed the throne and went on to confiscate English territory to secure his position. Edward III led a raid into France in 1338 to defend his claim and two years later named himself king. England won lots of battles due to their modern warfare techniques. In 1422, the current French king, Charles VI, died, and his son, the Dauphin, Charles VII, took control, though it was rumored that he was illegitimate. On October 12, 1428, the English laid siege to Orleans. Charles was incapable of retaking his country. He was on the verge of giving up. Enter Joan of Arc. Jeanne d'Arc, or Joan of Arc, was born in 1412 to the French peasants Jacques d'Arc and Isabelle de Vauthen. She helped her father in the fields they had in the town of Damery in northern France and was taught about religion by her mother. When she was about 12 years old, she began hearing voices. She said these voices were the voices of St. Michael, St. Catherine, and St. Margaret. In 1428, her voices urged her to save the city of Orleans and to talk the Dauphin Charles into going to Reims to be crowned. She talked to Lord Robert de Bounding into escorting her to the Dauphin. She then presented her case to the Dauphin. He sent her to be examined by a group of clergy who found nothing wrong with her. This diagnosis encouraged the Dauphin to allow her to accompany the army that was going to Orleans. On the way to Orleans, the illiterate Joan dictated a letter to the English demanding that they surrender her to her, the maid. At the age of 17, she arrived at Orleans. I am not afraid. I was born to do this, she once said. Joan of Arc, with her short hair and men's clothing, knew nothing of warfare. Her army set up a blockade around the city of Orleans. The French army attacked a point southeast of Orleans, but began to retreat until Joan showed up. The English attempted to attack the French troops as they retreated, but Joan charged them. When the French saw their leader charging, they charged too. When she was told after their small victory that they shouldn't attack the next day, she predicted that she would be wounded. I would rather die than do something which I know to be a sin or to be against God's will, she said. The next day, she was indeed wounded. She rested for a few hours before leading the troops back into battle. They successfully took Orleans from the English, much to the excitement of the people of Orleans. The next day, the English retreated from the city until July. Joan won battles across France, opening the way for Charles to enter Reims to be crowned. On July 17, 1429, with Joan by his side, holding her banner, the Dauphin Charles was crowned King of France. Joan knew that in order to save France, Charles needed to be crowned King in order to unite all the people of France behind one leader. It was her crowning moment. She later went to the aid of the city of Compagnie, even though she predicted that she would be captured. In May 1430, Joan of Arc was captured by the Burgundians during a battle with them. The Burgundians were allies of the English and sold her to them. She was then put in prison in Rouen, where she agreed to change into women's clothes. She then decided to change back into men's clothes for a few reasons, but mostly because men tried to take advantage of her while she was in prison, and the men's clothing protected her. After being interrogated and tortured for about a year, she was put on trial but was not allowed a legal advisor. At her trial, she was asked if she was in God's graces. Joan of Arc answered, If I am not, may God put me there, and if I am, may God so keep me. Joan knew that if she said no, she would have been called a liar, and if she said yes, she would have been denied the authority of the church and be committing hearsay. She said this quote wisely, that was neither a yes or a no. She was convicted and found guilty of many crimes. These were witchcraft, sorcery, male dress, hearsay, being an agent of the devil, and fraud. Her punishment was being burned at the stake. Joan of Arc requested to have two priests hold a cross in front of her and one for her to hold. On May 30th, 1431, she was burned at the stake by Geoffrey Theridge, the executioner. Joan of Arc was only 19 years old. Her body was burned twice, so no relics could be saved because she was already being seen as a saint. Joan of Arc's ashes were thrown in the Senna River. Charles VII never tried to save her from this horrible death. On July 7, 1456, she was found innocent of her crimes 25 years after her death. What Joan of Arc did and accomplished affected the people of France. She inspired the French and was seen as a heroine of their country. Joan of Arc was and is a symbol of French courage, pride, and the strength of the peasant classes. 
Here in America, we were influenced by what Joan of Arc did 583 years ago in 1429. A lot of movies have been produced about Joan of Arc's story. These are just a few. The Messenger, the story of Joan of Arc that was released in 1999. The Joan of Arc movie that was made in 1948 is well known too. Finally, there was a Joan of Arc miniseries made in 1999 as well. Mark Twain also wrote a book called Joan of Arc that most people don't know about. Joan of Arc inspired more movies, TV shows, games, music, plays and books all about her story and what she did. Joan of Arc was made a saint of France for martyrs, captives, soldiers, prisoners, and women who have served. Joan of Arc had a very short life of only 19 years, but had a huge impact in history. She defeated the English, defied what was normal, and died for what she did. Joan of Arc is known around the globe as a symbol of bravery and victory that does and will inspire all for years to come.